So we're walking from the from Bush Baby to our guest house where we're staying. And Muzi is following us. Muzi always follows us, but then when he gets here, he gets into a fight with the dogs that live here. So we told him to stay, didn't we? We told you to stay. So watch. When we walk, Muzi follows. And when I turn around, I look. <laughs> he pretends that he's not following us. <laughs> It's like we're playing red light, green light with a dog. See, when we walk, he follows. When I turn around, I look. Oh, there. There'll be the word. Green light. <laughs> green light. <laughs> red light. <laughs> green light. <laughs> red light. Oh, he's not coming yet. Green light. Red light! Red light. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. So last night there was a really big storm. It rained really hard for about an hour. This morning the electricity is out and there's a cow in the yard. Wow, Abby, look at how high you are. Hi everyone, welcome to my beautiful unschooled life. My name is Erin. Today the kids and I have had a picnic in this really lovely clearing in the valley where there's all these guava trees. The kids are actually climbing a guava tree right there, right now. They're pretending to be monkeys. Abby's sitting under another guava tree eating again because Abby eats all the time and never stops. Um, so today I wanted to talk about what does unschooling look like? When I was planning to unschool, when my children were very little, I wanted to know what it looked like. I'd never seen it before and I didn't know anyone who unschooled and it's so unspecific. <laughs> Everything you read about unschooling, it mostly tells you what unschooling isn't. It doesn't really tell you what unschooling is. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about, well, I'll talk a little bit about both, but mostly about what unschooling is. So unschooling is different for everyone <laughs> that's the main problem that's the first problem with it because unschooling to me the core of unschooling is it is education in the real world that is individually tailored to each child's needs but also to my needs so it never looks the same and people will say to me oh well unschooling only works for some kids um, but to me, by definition, unschooling works for all kids because it is schooling that is tailored for each individual child. If it doesn't work for that child, then you're not tailoring it to that child. <laughs> and you're sure some, some kids need structure and some kids need large groups. And if you're giving them what they need, then that's unschooling. It's not control from above. I don't decide what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, here in Uganda, I'm working with two teachers who were trained in traditional old school education. And every morning they say to me, what's the program for today? And I say, I don't know. <laughs> and they find that really hard. Um, so yeah, unschooling is kind of chaotic and disorganized. It looks like we're not learning. It looks like we're just climbing trees pretending to be monkeys <laughs> but really there is you need to appreciate that there is learning in every single thing that you do and in each thing we do the learning is different for each child so for instance today climbing this tree 
what Bethany's lesson was, with bravery, is doing something you're scared of and trying to overcome your fear and doing it anyways because you know that the payoff is worth it. Whereas for Chirabo, the lesson today was being patient with someone who's scared of something that you don't know why they're scared of and helping talk them through their fears so that you can enjoy an activity together. There you go, that was a great lesson. That's a really important lesson. Unschooling is chaotic and disorganized, but it is also messy. <laughs> um, really messy and I very much struggle with that because I'm a person who likes clean cleanliness so that's why the outdoors is good for us because if they make a mess outside I don't really care um, they make a mess of themselves when we're outside water must be played with I have never seen a child walk past a puddle or a creek without sticking something in it <laughs> whether it's a shoe or a stick or a rope we went up for a forest walk yesterday and there's a little, there's little streams, spring fed creeks that run through the forest and they have little bridges over them. And the first bridge that they went over, the kids were very careful not to get wet. The second bridge, they were a little less careful. The third bridge, they were less careful. And by the time we got to the fourth bridge, well, they were swimming. Except for Abby, who had no interest in getting wet whatsoever. Um, that's just how it goes. That's just how kids are. Don't get angry at your kids. This is, this is their curiosity. This is how curiosity reveals itself. In wondering what will happen if I step in the water that goes higher than my boots. <laughs> you know, what's at the bottom of that river? What does the water feel like? What temperature is it? How does that sand feel? You know, that's... That's curiosity, and it's a good thing, but it's messy, and you have to be okay with it. Um, paint never stays on the paper. You should always just assume they're going to make a mess, and paint in a location where mess is acceptable. Holes must be dug deeper and deeper. Sand will end up in their socks, and in their pants, and up their noses, and in their hair. Um, birds and bugs. Other creatures, lizards, <laughs> are a big part of our day. We found a gecko the other day, and of course, when a kid sees a gecko, they try to pick it up by the tail. And of course, when a gecko is scared, it sheds its tail, and the tail keeps wiggling on its own, which is a really cool lesson in biology. Uh, if we see bugs, we're going to pick them up. Maybe you, as a parent, will develop the skill of holding creepy crawlies in your hand. <laughs> but part of this is also making sure the children respect and appreciate nature. Uh, the boy's instinct right now is, let's kill it! So we're working on trying to understand the, the cycle of life and how each of these critters is an important part of the ecosystem. And so even though you don't like something, you shouldn't just kill it. Uh, risk is an important part of their development. Letting them do things that scare me. <laughs> Letting them do things that scare them. That's how children learn their boundaries. That's how children learn their skill level. Um, if they can take risk in safe places like this, they're likely, less likely to take risks in dangerous places like parking lots. Now, the children do take organized lessons. There's a soccer coach that comes in a couple of times a week. There's a karate coach that comes in a couple of times a week. There's a mu music teacher that comes in. And those things are fine as long as it's optional, as long as the kids are doing it because they want to. So they can join in, they can leave as they see fit, depending on what they want. Some people feel like children need to be made to do things so they can learn how to do things that they don't want to do. 
And that's absolutely a part of life. I've had to do loads of things that I didn't want to do. Like, you know, have a root canal in Africa. You know, that's a great example of having to do things that you don't want to do. Um, but I don't think learning, I don't think learning should be one of those things. Uh, vaccinations hey, can be one of those things. Look Car seat buckles can be one of those things. Aunt. Oh my this one is mine and yeah. this one is yours. Oh my very own aunt. Thank you, darling. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. I saw this kind of thing before. We got cool, everything eh? here, at least to stay alive. And the time that we share makes it all worthwhile. Got this place on. Do you feel that like we got something strong? And I saw you. Location change. <laughs> the kids had had enough of tree climbing, so we headed back to the lodge. I'm now hiding in the cow pasture <laughs> under this beautiful tree that I've been admiring for three weeks. So I was talking about what unschooling looks like. A huge part of it is work that I do on myself. Work that I do trying to resist the temptation to do all these things that are accepted as normal, to resist the temptation to come over here, sit down and read with me, and sit down and write with me. Let's watch this educational thing. And so if you're forcing them, if you're using shame, if you're using uh, fear, if you're using bribery to try and get a kid to sit down and learn, then they are going to associate learning with shame and fear and bribery. What you want is for them to associate learning with the joy of learning, <laughs> the joy of, of, of understanding, of wisdom, of expanding yourself and expanding your mind. For sure, sometimes I am suggesting activities. Usually it's based on something I've seen in the moment. Uh, there's a, an emotional situation or a social situation that has arisen and and I find it best to deal with those in the moment rather than like, okay, today we're going to talk about friendship. <laughs> you know, we talk about friendship every day. Whenever there's a situation where someone's being a good friend or someone's not being a good friend, we talk about it. Not with shame. 
just to raise awareness you know notice what you've just done notice how your actions affect this person notice how this first person feels you don't make a big deal out of it you don't make people feel bad about it you just raise awareness for what's been going on um so yeah i have to be very creative in responding to each child's individual needs in the moment as the day progresses and the other thing I have to really be responsive to is being able to answer their questions when they're asked. And it's important to do that because asking questions is the key to learning. Finding answers is the key to learning. So I, it, when children ask questions and never get answers, then they stop asking questions. So I try to always answer questions when they're asked as much as possible. It's hard to do when there's six kids and just one of me. Um, but that's the idea. This is not a nine to five job. This is something that we do all day, every day. I am always teaching myself new things so that I'm better able to answer their questions. And they are asking me questions 24 hours a day. There's no, you know, school hours. But that also means that, so the teachers are here from nine until three and in that nine till three time period, a lot of that is downtime. A lot of that is the kids playing and me resting or me looking something up on my own. You know, it's, um, it's not confined to school hours. As my kids get older, I know unschooling will change as they do learn how to read and do learn how to write. Um, I'm sure things will look different and I will make videos about that when I get there. For now, I would love it if you could tell me what unschooling looks like in your house, if you're an unschooler, and if you want to learn more about our version of unschooling, or our adventures in Uganda, or um, how we cope with ADHD and anxiety, you should subscribe to my channel. I make videos pretty often, and it would be nice to have you along for the ride. Are you the cow of the castle? Yes, I am. <laughs>